And we have uh, a friend in studio, uh, Kathleen Ruddy, who is at the moment uh, experiencing palliative care through the Donegal Hospice. And she's brought with her her daughter, Mary, who's actually home from London to look after mum, basically. She came back when uh, mum took sick. Um, that was in March of this year. And we're going to be talking about Kathleen's um, diagnosis and living uh, at the moment with the condition that she has. Thanks for joining us. Hello, Kathleen. Hello, Sean. Nice to be here this morning. It's lovely to see you. And to Mary as well, your daughter, Mary, who's joining us in the studio. Thanks, Mary. No bother, Sean. How are you? I'm well. Thanks, Mary. Now, Kathleen, this time last year, I was talking to Paddy Blaney about palliative care, hospice care. And you didn't know then what you know now. No, I certainly didn't and had absolutely no idea what was coming around the corner for me. So what was happening this time last year, would you say? Can you remember like w what was going on in your life? Probably life, as we would call normal, was just continuing. And you were doing your everyday works. And probably I began to feel like something just wasn't quite right. That would have been around about the month of March of this year. And it was simple things like everyday things like driving a car, um, trying to figure out why did it not work the way you felt it should do. And then with some um, interventions through the medical um, people, I began to discover then that I was having symptoms that were very like vertigo and but didn't seem to make an awful lot of sense at the same time. And in the month of March, I had to go to Beaumont Hospital in Dublin for further tests. And they would have shown that I had a brain tumour that was looking very like it was going to be an incurable one, which was a huge shock for me and my family at the time. But the support and the just the absolute dedication of so many people and palliative care, which I only began to hear those words about at the time. They were initially scary words for me because I thought palliative care meant the end of everything, but it is by no means the end of anything. It is by every means the help and the dedication and the love of so many people, so many people with a hand out to help, so many people giving of their time so willingly and so voluntarily that I was absent, myself and my family have been absolutely overwhelmed by kindness, prayer, so much palliative care is the beginning of so much. It is the beginning of a different way of living your life where you trust implicitly everybody around you who are there with a helping hand. Not alone your family, but people you don't even know. And you're so taken by this. Palliative care is such a huge name a huge umbrella and it is so positive and whenever you kathleen were told that you had this brain tumor mm -hmm. and that it wasn't going to be curable mm -hmm. you you'd gone from somebody living a normal life mm -hmm. to getting a bit dizzy yeah. and then within a few weeks being told there's not a lot we can do for this i mean how yeah. how difficult i mean obviously we're honest with you i mean did you did you want did you say i want you to tell me what's exactly the truth or did you make it easier it, for them to tell you that or the f the first words were quite negative the first diagnosis words were quite negative in their sounding but out of that negative came a more positive because I tried my best to hold on to the positive parts that were coming as in, we will do everything we can for you. 
and if I was not going to do allow them to do everything they could for me, there wasn't much point in thinking about other things. So I had to think about the positive. I had to see the positive because these people had faith and I had faith in them. And I'm sure your thoughts turned to your family when you were told straight away because you start then to think about your children and how are they going to feel as a mother yes. and your... Yes. And as the time went on, I began to learn more about the actual hospice movement here in Donegal and the palliative care movement of on a Wednesday, they have a day where you go to their centre. The Thursday. Sorry, it's Thursday, sometimes it makes the days up a wee bit. Yeah. But you go there and they they bring you through nice things like having reflexology and having your nails painted or something that makes you feel yourself and you don't have to be anybody else. How, how does that now, because it, it seems small, I know that mm -hmm. this is important to you because I'm listening and I'm watching you, but it would seem small compared to the dramatic thing that's happened in your life and the uh, disappointment at having this condition and, you know, you, you're young and all of that, and yet you say somebody doing your nails at a point like that means a lot. It means a huge amount because it means you feel you are that same person you were before you were sick. And that's the part you have to hold on to. That is the part that is worth holding on to. Because if you let go of that, you let go of everything. Are you in pain? No. Have you been in pain? Very, very little initially. But pain is very well controlled with um, palliative care. It is all the time monitored and if you need anything it is so quickly attended to and the doctors and nurses and the volunteers that give up their time nobody would leave you in any distress so you don't have to be in distress now mary's here hi mary again hi. thanks thanks mary for being here and you came back when you heard about mum's condition you want to be with mom from london um how hard was it for you to hear that news initially um well i was sitting at my desk uh, in my office and at lunchtime i got a call from mum to say who's with you and i thought oh this isn't good and because uh, i knew, I, I knew she'd, she'd been in hospital for a couple of days yeah. and uh she says that they've got this scan results back and they said it's potentially very serious and at six o'clock that evening I was on a flight home and I've been pretty much home since. I mean, I've, I've now moved home. I mean, that's a that's a whole other saga, but, uh, you know, but to be here, to be with mum, you know, not wasting time and spending every day and hour. That's it, yeah. That just felt so important for you. Yeah, yeah. oh, absolutely, absolutely. And how have you dealt with it personally? I mean, I know that really you don't sometimes have time for yourself because you're so busy looking after mom and wanting to be with mom. And what about your own experience? How, for instance, how has the palliative care that your mother's getting helped you? Oh, it's it's been phenomenal. Like, I I remember um, it was probably the middle of the summer. It was after mom's treatment had finished um, in Dublin, and the GP kind of said, you know, maybe you should get in contact with the palliative team. And and initially I thought, but she she's not going to die yet, you know. Um, and she says, no, what it is, she says, at first it will be comfort care, and it's to make your mum's life as comfortable as physically, humanly possible. And so we got in contact, and we had our fabulous hospice nurse came down to the house um, with the with the doctor at the time, and. Um, you know, a few days later, we had an occupational therapist come down to the house to see, you know, how can we make the house work best? You know, um, the stairs were becoming difficult. So, you know, basically life had to move to, to downstairs and they couldn't have given us any more than, than what they have to in terms of equipment, 
um, beds, chairs, everything that's that's needed, um, and that 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 made life instantly so much easier for mum and indeed for for everyone. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's been very very difficult, and like some days, you know, it's kind of water off a duck's back. You just kind of get on with it because you don't have a choice. Um, like, yeah, you could sit in the corner cry all day, but that's going to get you nowhere, and it's not going to make sort of your time worthwhile. Um, You've done that as well, of course. Yeah, done that, been yeah. there, done that. <laughs> um, but like we we have a tremendous family. Mum mum is one of eight siblings, and every one of them are are, are phenomenal. Mm. Um, and and indeed, Dad's family as well. And I have brother and sister, and they they are all doing as much as they can when they can. And 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 dad, obviously dad's at home as well so it's and how's dad doing ah he's good days and bad days wouldn't you say mum but yeah. he, he's hanging in there as best he can he's hanging in there yeah you know, that the, when you're given something like this you don't have any option but for life to continue and you know as dad said in 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 the beginning he says we didn't get good news you know the diagnosis that mum got it wasn't like let's try this treatment and let's try that treatment and let's try that and maybe or you know maybe something will work they did treatment purely for the purposes of just holding things back for a while but we didn't get good news so we've had to be incredibly realistic from from the get-go but we can't live every day that you know like <laughs> you know, is today going to be the day that it's going to happen? Because you can't live like that because you'd crack up. Um, and even, you know, for the last week, mum has been in the hospice and the nurses and the doctors and the extra staff that are all there and, you know, the volunteers that come in for the daycare services. You know, it's really... They try uh, to make your life as, as fun as yeah. they can for you. And it's amazing how much fun we have there on days where we're all gathered together and you're having crack with each other or figuring out how to do something. It might be some wee craft thing that you've decided you're going to make as a wee group together and you just get on with it and it just is like a wee life of its own. It's like nobody's and, sick, everyone's just being normal. And you normal. appreciate, mm. you appreciate where you are. Well, I wanted to ask you about that. I mean, obviously, when you get a, a diagnosis as, as catastrophic as that in your life, and let's be honest about it, you know, mm -hmm. and because nobody wants that. Mm -hmm. How how does it make you feel about day to day life after that and the time, the minutes, the hours that you have now? I don't think you count the hours and the minutes the same way as what you did. Maybe for a wee while you think, should we not be doing this or should we not be doing that? There is no pattern. Like, what are we all doing? We're all doing our best. And hospice, the hospice movement maybe moves it all into a more organised, if organised is the right word, organised but doable way of life for for you and the people around you. Like I, well, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. I mean, I, I find, you know, it's, uh, even being up in the hospice for the last week um, that, you know, it's given us time to relax with one another and just spend time and just watch television and, you know, and and talk and sing. And, you know, we d because there are staff there who are doing all the things that we've had to be thinking about medication and getting mum to bed and making sure mum is you know gets all her meals and uh, as well as you know just the day-to-day -day keeping the house tidy and we've had lots of visitors so you know just sort of being you know um being hospitable to everybody that's come our way that in itself is its own job whereas being in the hospice has kind of actually taken all those responsibilities away oh, from us yeah. and we all we have to do is just be there and enjoy each other you're you're probably making it very easy for people to be honest kathleen who come and see you because 
It's very hard. You know, I'm sure you went to visit people before you were diagnosed who had cancer. Yes. And were dying. Many times. Okay. Yeah. And you know how hard that is. Yeah. And what do you say or what do you not say? Mm -hmm. um, and suddenly, and I'm sure you, you like all of us, thought about what if this happened to me and all of that, you know, mm -hmm. and suddenly you're in that situation and people are coming to you. I mean, there's a great serenity about you. There's a great peace about you. Um, that must probably make it easier for people. It's very hard. Nobody feels comfortable coming into a situation when they, you know, they know somebody's got this serious diagnosis. But you're obviously making. Uh, would you? Do you yeah, I mean, I, I think I think that the the big, big, big thing that has carried us all through is 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 our faith that we have. Right. You know, we mum would be particularly spiritual person. And I mean, I've said it, I don't know how many times throughout this whole thing. I have no idea how people go through this type of thing if they don't have some faith in something or someone or, you know, like we've we've been supported so much through prayer. Um, we actually, mum made a pilgrimage to Austria to a, 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 a convent there um, that that's very special to, to us all. And... Uh, you know, even the treatment that we got there from the sisters that we visited was just Why, why amazing. did you go there, Kathleen? I went there because I had an initial contact um, with an order of nuns about 11 years ago. And it is a contact that has stayed with me ever since. It has been something that has meant a lot in my life. And it was like our own pilgrimage. It was very where private. It was lovely. It was very private. Sometimes I wonder, did it really happen? But I know it did happen. Why was it so special? Because it just filled my life with something that hadn't been there before. The 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 work. Uh, the, well, the order is called the work. Um, the spiritual family, the work. And um, there's uh, two sisters here in Letter Kenny. And uh, as mum said, we became um, aware of the work um, about 11 or 12 years ago. And their, um, their founding mother is Mother Julia. Um, she um, passed away in 1997. Um, but she's very, um, well, we, we believe that she has very powerful inter in, in intercession. Um, and her tomb is there in, uh, in, uh, in Austria, in a place called Briggins. And that's that's where we went to visit. So we went to visit the the tomb of 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 Mother Julia, and it was it was a wonderful one of the most privilege special for us as a family, when it means so much, so much to us. Can I ask you? Did you do any bargaining with God at the beginning to save you and not to? You don't bargain with God. You didn't do any of that. I did not. No. Did you say please? No, I no. didn't. No. I, I did. Don't, I you didn't did. I bet you did. <laughs> I don't need to. Okay, so tell me about that. Why? Why don't you need to? I don't need to because he's here. And I think that just about sums it up for me. He's always here for me. Whether I agree with him all the time or not, I feel he's never far away. And then if you have such faith, you believe there's something else after this? I do. So does that help? It helps to some degree, but I don't dwell on what that may be or may not be. I just, I go with what I have on a day. And if it's a good day, it's a good day. And I like to see the family able to get through their day. And I think just the kindness of so many people. This is Kathleen Roddy and her daughter Mary. Mary's home from London uh, helping to care for mum and mum is being cared for by the Donegal Hospice at the moment. She's getting palliative care and this is a very special week. And I mean, Paddy, there's there's not a lot to add to it, is there? This story is telling so much of the story of the hospice and of palliative care. Oh, Sean, I'm in awe. Um, hello. Um, uh, I'm just in awe of listening to you guys as a family. Hi, Kathleen and, and Mary. Um, Hi, I, I'm Paddy Blaney, and I'm I'm helping run an, or, an All Ireland organisation that helps support the research, education, and the and the practice of palliative care. And um, if I could bottle what you guys have just said, uh, it would be it would do it all for me. I am in really in awe of you guys, and just a, a tremendous debt of of gratitude to you for sharing the journey you are on. Um, I am 
please, I am just delighted that your journey is being so supported and you are obviously as a family able to navigate the journey you want. What palliative care should be is the support in the background uh, supporting any part of that journey, whether it's a quiet day, minding each other, or it's a, it's a trip to Austria. I think that's what palliative care is. Palliative care is there to look at the, the medical, the social, the emotional, the psychological, and indeed for yourselves, the spiritual, so is that anything to do with with your quality of life, what, what is really important to you guys, is supported by palliative care and you're, you've just told the story and just tremendous better words Sean than I could ever use and what I think is interesting as well and I think I, I picked this up right Kathleen that you, you're in the hospice at the minute but you you could be in and out of the hospice or you could have the palliative care nurses in the home uh, you have the palliative care OT the multidisciplinary team who are involved and that's Sean one of the messages we want to get across this week that Palliative care doesn't just get delivered in a hospice. It gets delivered throughout the health system and you can get it in your own, your own community. The fact that your own community, as Sean pulled out from you there, um, Mary, was that I think you guys have made it easier for your wider friends, family and community to approach you and to offer help. And that's something as well that palliative care tries to encourage and we have a name for it we call compassionate communities but we have we we are mindful of trying to build that sort of sense in our communities so that we can all support each other when they have these journeys to to travel but thank you so much for letting us hear that it was just Mm. incredible yeah when my mother was diagnosed with cancer a caller says she made us promise that we would not allow her to go to the hospice. In the end, she asked to go there. And once there, she kept on saying, why was I so afraid to come here? It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. And uh, were you, you were afraid of it, in, were you, at one time? I probably was anxious. What did it actually mean to be going to the hospice? Is this the end of everything? Yeah. Far from it. It's the beginning of so much. OK, well... Um, my heart goes out to Kathleen. Total respect to her and her daughter for coming on to tell their story. Having lost my father to the same diagnosis last year, I really know where they're coming from. And it shows what a strong person she is. And I really hope uh, she... I wish her all the best, basically, in, in this hard road that it, she's on at the moment. And um, we had a call from your family as well to say that you're, let me read this now, Um, you're going to be talking, I think, to my sister, Sean, re-palliative care, she's in the Donegal Hospice, and I would love you to play Whispering Hope, because she loves it, from her sisters and brothers who love her, and are so proud of her coverage, her courage. How does that feel? That was lovely. Yeah. That was a favourite of my mother and father. Well, we'll play for you. Thank you. Play for you. Um, Kathleen is an inspiration a very special lady God bless you, lots of love Kathleen, Daniel and all the family from the Kelly family as well and just to say my uncle was in the Donegal Hospice and the care they gave him was unbelievable and we will never forget him and Breezy says you are a total inspiration she lit up when you heard that Um, how does it feel hearing this? It just feels so special to me. Just, it is what it's about. It is what it's about. Palliative care is what you're saying. So anything you want to do is anything, I mean, you went to Austria to the nuns, it was something you really wanted to do for 11 years. You didn't think it would take this to bring that about, but uh, what, what do you think? I think mean, now you live in the moment. I mean, I'm listening to you, living every day for the moment and you're not perhaps looking too far into the future, but is there anything you want to do? I think I just want my family to be okay where they're going to be when the time comes. And I do believe they will be okay because they're strong and they're good with each other. What do you feel about that? She's an incredible woman, she really is. Yes, and she's your mum. The only one I've got. Yeah. <laughs> Thank well, you. Paddy, 
thank you very much for talking to us from the All Ireland Institute of Hospice and Palliative Care. And you have uh, obviously somebody who's articulating that work very well for us today. Thanks, Paddy. Absolutely. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, and the very best to to Kathleen and the and Mary and the, and the wider family. Thank Take care. Thank you. Frankie and Eleanor Monaghan just want to say, would you wish Kathleen all the best from us? And um, all your friends in, is it uh, Amici? Amici. 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 And you're an inspiration, Kathleen, and you're a good friend, says Annette Cunningham as well. All the good people out there. And now, that, that I have to say, the people that we are surrounded by are phenomenal, both in, in the care that she's receiving from the medical practice, but also from all the neighbors. family and friends. We have incredible neighbours, we have incredible friends, we have an amazing family. And really the support that we have got from day one has been just extraordinary. Well, I know that um, when people have people in the care of the hospice, they often want to do things for the hospice then. and because they know and you're getting to see firsthand how good the work is and I hope people listening to you today will remember the good work of the Donegal Hospice and the Foyle Hospice, the great Dr Tom McGinley as well, who've done super work she as well. Re she, she actually did one of the, the, the coffee mornings herself in uh, was that up September there and raised a fortune of money for for the Donegal Hospice. You know, it, it, she, she really is. She's an incredible woman. Well, Leslie and Margaret have called in as well. OK, and everyone's talking about this fantastic talent that you are and produced and musical talent. And tell us a bit more about that, Kathleen, because I know about oh it. Oh, but... my gosh. I was very privileged to be involved in a musical called Cash Lador mm. with a great friend, Leslie Law and Phil Dalt. And we've had such fun times producing, rehearsing, r just staging Cash Lenore, that the happiness that we got from that was maybe carrying us mm -hmm. all on the, this part of the journey. Young Declan Harvey did Declan that. Declan yeah. Harvey. Oh, I couldn't, I could list them out all yeah. around this town. Yeah. It was a privilege to be with them all. Well, sounds like it was likewise. Um, you're amazing, you're unbelievable, and you're such an inspiration to so many people. Pauline and family in Boncran are sending uh, that one in today. And I'm going to play that song for you now. Thank you, Sean. At least we can do. Thank you. That's a very simple much. thing, very simple thing. Thank and I uh, hope you'll be around for uh, a while yet, Kathleen, because so. you're, you're very special and obviously people care deeply for you. And thank you for coming in. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank you.